Let's start with uh, two questions that uh, have been bothering me lately from my dual quality as a universitarian and a senator. Involved in the legislative flows of the European Union. So, the first one, can the EU withstand with the crisis from its borders? The second one, can this construction support the entire financial and solidarity effort so it can be manageable? I think these are the questions now. These questions are at their turn the result of evidence, some evidence which serve as generic examples for me. The first one, you have to tell me about it. While at the borders of the EU, registered approximately 1,000 refugees a day that led to one million amount, the EU institution create a mechanism for only 160,000 uh, refugees trying to manage the crisis, which itself seems unoperative today too. Many of them are still in Germany. The second uh, evidence, the European system did not give the proper attention to it evident connection between the two terrorist attacks from Paris and Brussels. These are some signs showing that some mechanisms still doesn't work proper and efficient. Dear colleague, ladies and gentlemen, as hard as it may seem to admit today, we have to say that the EU is going through a mixture of events that can cause a systemic crisis. And uh, I feel some uh, pressure on the system named as uh, the security pressure, the solidarity pressure, and not at least, very important, the credibility pressure. At their turn, the EU's institutions made some answers. You know, the European agenda on security, which has started to talk about enlargement and neighborhoods for a very specific means I will show you right on. At the end of uh, 2015, the EU outlined answers on both uh, assets, referring to the enlargement and the neighborhoods. for the first one. We've got very fast to, I didn't found it right here. Oh yes. We've got the answers in this context. On those policies, the one on uh, on extension and the one on neighborhood, the enlargement. The first one said, talking about the six countries in the Western Balkans and Turkey, the first one says, uh, hey, stop. We should look only to the fundamental assets of the enlargements 
regarding to those countries. Other way, we are continuing to make demands, procedures, figures or laws, and we could lose them. Why? Because they are affected about the refugees crisis. This is about uh, uh, enlargement. About the neighborhood policies, the things are bad too. And you see, in November last year, on the review of the European neighborhood policy starts from an honest and painful, very painful premise. The review process starts from a series of findings that the situation on the borders are less stable than 10 years ago. So we've made a mechanism 10 years ago we put it on the road, and now we have to see that the situation is less stable than 10 years ago. About neighborhoods, about enlargement, there are some nuances now which are more realistic than 10 years ago. Is it assumed that the expansion means departing from the model? Is it assumed that we get closer to the conflicts in the eastern neighborhood? It is sometimes assumed that the expansion in itself causes crisis. However, when this neighborhood transforms in sources of crisis, which tends to become uncontrollable, as we saw last year, the question automatically arises, is the European Union able to respond in institutionally to these unforeseen circumstances? We've got a European agenda on security. And subsequently, a European agenda on migration, in which is said we need to restore confidence in our ability to bring together European and national efforts. On October last year, after the agenda on migration was assumed, it was a EU Western Balkans uh, uh, meeting on which they established some points to follow to manage the crisis. After that, in uh, the end of 2015, the pre predominance was held by such failures as unilateral measures, lack of political will, reception capacity under stability the object, objectives, insufficient measures for the migration. For all, all these reasons, dear colleagues, I would call this year, 2016, the European Year of Confidence and Solidarity. I hope I have managed to show you that we've got institutional mechanisms. Cooperation between the EU states and the implementation of these mechanisms is the solutions. This is what we miss today. The solution is solidarity, not disbelief. The answer is most, more Europe, not less. On the migration crisis, they said Schengen is the problem. 
Schengen is not the source of the problem. Schengen can, can be part of solution, they said, when we've got safer borders. Trying to, uh, I think you cannot see it. It's a schedule from our European Affairs Committee. And the red and one are some uh, commission communications from uh, uh, the EU institution regarding the crisis of the migrants. You can see in this one too, these are weekly meetings. And every week, the European institutions are sending us in national parliaments some measures to be consulted. We've got the mechanisms. We need only to stay together. Thank you very much. Wonderful. You saved us a little time.